Esther. Hi. Hi. We finally did it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for uh, hanging around. And um, yeah, sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining us for this um, CFC members quiz with uh, Zoe de Luca Lega. And uh, tonight, as I mentioned, this is a new format uh, so in which we introduce our members to the community here on Instagram. Uh, and then later on, we'll repost this video to other channels uh, so you can rewatch it if you like. And this, we will um, host this event for around 10, 15 minutes. And uh, there will be two parts to it, really. The first one is um, a series of short quiz questions uh, with ABC answers uh, that I'll be asking Zoe. And feel free to put your, your answers um, in the chat. You know, it'd be nice to see what you think as well. And in the second part, we'll explore Zoe's practice in uh, more detail. Yeah, we'll ask about some more specific aspects of it. Um, so yeah, introducing our members is really important to us and everyone who is a member gets exclusive access to new art opportunities on our website and network opportunities, um, as well as some free online art events. Um, it's a free to try and yeah, so I really encourage you to check out um, after this live. And as I mentioned here, we're tonight with Zoe, who's a curator, critic and writer based in Milan and her practice has a few parts, kind of focuses on um, interdisciplinary studies and slow community-based, community-oriented projects. Um, so it's a great pleasure to have you here tonight with us, Zoe. Yeah, how are you doing? Hi, well, thanks, first of all, for inviting me to begin this new format of call uh, for curators. It's very exciting to be here today. And thanks to everybody who is joining as for this um, experiment uh, of this new format. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, great, great to hear that you're well. And yeah, it's our pleasure to have you. Um, so yeah, we don't have that much time. It's going to be quite fast paced. So uh, yeah, we're starting with the first short question. Um, yeah, and everyone else just tell us in the comments what you think. So the first question is, what would be a perfect place for a curatorial residency and why? A, it's Mars, B, it's the ocean floor, and C, it's Silicon Valley. Well, I will definitely go for the uh, ocean floor. Um, well, it's quite easy because of my lack of interest uh, towards the Silicon Valley, but also because I think that even though Mars is really interesting as well, and it would definitely be my second choice. Uh, we maybe don't need to go that far to find some very different settings. So I think ocean floor would definitely be very interesting because it's a, a situation in which many perspectives are changed and we should really have to work on going out of our comfort zones and switching the paradigm of uh, how we think life can work and so art as well so yeah definitely the second yeah i think yeah i think i think that's that's really interesting and it's a great point that the ocean floor oceans are, are areas that we really don't know much about while well, we're reaching out to mars uh at the same time uh, okay so the second question from these is um i would like to ask you if you could go if you could go for a dinner with an artist, um, who would that be? And also why? So A, it's Judy Chicago, B, Donatello, and C, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Uh, that's a tough one. I guess I would go for um, Judy Chicago because it's probably the artist that I would feel closer to my practice being very much focused on uh, feminist topics uh, and gender issues and so on. So that would be definitely an interesting chance to have a conversation with, a, with an artist that was so relevant uh, to some of these issues that are so dear to me as well. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, I think yeah, we would definitely enjoy 
a dinner and a glass of wine with Judy Chicago. I can see that there are some other <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can see that there are other answers in the chat. Um, yeah, tell us why, if you think otherwise as well. Okay, and the first question is, which of these uh, art events we could find you at? A, Freeze London, B, Venice Biennial, C, Art Basel. Uh, I would say Venice Biennial because uh, to start with, I'm not a huge fan of fairs. I mean, nothing against them. They have the reason to be there for sure. And I often go, but the fair and booth kind of situation is not my favorite one to uh, discover new art. When on the other hand, being uh, born and raised in the countryside near Venice, uh, I can definitely say that the Venice Biennial, it's one of the uh, art events that were most relevant in my, in my formation. So it was one of the very first experience for me to uh, see art exhibitions since I was in high school. So I would definitely choose that one because of a actual personal bond. Yeah. Yeah, have you been to the this year's, the one that just opened? Yeah, I just went to the to the first weekend. It was really exciting. Also, it was for me personally the first time attending a big art event uh, after the uh, last couple of years. So, I mean, besides exhibitions and openings, of course, but that was the first big, big situation uh, for me to attend. So it was very interesting and intense as well. Um, I'm not sure I was mentally prepared. It was really challenging, but yeah, really nice. Yeah, um, great. I think now we're gonna go to the longer questions um, and we're gonna find out more about your work. Um, but I want, to just, I want to start this bit with um, asking you about how did you get into curating and you know, what's your background? What was your journey into curating? Mm -hmm. So I think my first approach to curating surely happened within the experience of Diorama Editions. Diorama Editions is an editorial project I started in my first year of college with a group of friends and colleagues. And it was a small publishing house uh, that through many years of activity uh, published a namesake magazines, a few books, artist editions, and uh, allowed us also to travel through uh, Europe, attending some art publishing fairs and festivals, organizing uh, workshops, lectures, talks, and so on. Mm -hmm. And it was a very exciting time and definitely very formative, as for me, it was one of the very first experiences in which I could try some curating, writing, art directing uh, experiences. And it was definitely one of the most important, important uh, things I've done in my early years. So this was, um, it began in 2011. And then in 2018, we started the um, digital, uh, we can say sister of the project, which is called Panorama. It's a digital archive uh, with the studio visit uh, with artists based in Italy. And that was some sort of uh, spontaneous evolution of the editorial project I started when I was in college. So it's still something in progress in a way. And it's uh, also nice to see how what I started at, my, at the very beginning of my career is still active somehow. Yeah, so it seems there's a um, very big um, kind of publishing and the editorial had a very big influence on, on your practice. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and kind of following on that, um, I know that you're a co-founder of, um, of an art agency um, called Silicon. And can you tell us about it? Yeah, what is this art agency and kind of how it functions? What, what should, what's your role in there? Sure. So, well, first of all, Silicon comes from the idea of uh, artist and co-founder Andrea Magnani, with whom I started the project back in 2014. Uh, Silicon started as an art label uh, devoted to the uh, production and promotion of contemporary art. And through the years, we organized uh, artistic residencies, uh, exhibitions, uh, uh, workshops. Uh, we did some publishing too. So we had um, a very big experience uh, in, in many different ways. 
And then uh, in 2019, together with artists uh, Enrico Boccioletti and Alessandro Di Pietro, we developed a Silicon Agency, which is essentially a communication studio run by a network of artists uh, and curators. Uh, we developed the project of Silicon into the uh, agency because we realized how many professional skills, uh, such as coding, uh, typography, set design, uh, photography, video, sound design, and so on and so forth, can be shared by one's artistic practice and a creative commissions. So we decided to start offering our clients uh, some tailor-made services that could be influenced by the background, the research, uh, and the aesthetic of the artists working on it. So that's basically how it works. In the last uh, two years, uh, we mostly had to focus on digital project uh, for obvious reasons. So what you would see in our website, it's mostly other websites, uh, but of course, uh, the range of activities uh, we are aiming to develop, uh, it's much broader than that. And uh, we will see how this will grow. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, definitely exciting to to see how how agencies, how artists adapted to to the conditions that we had in the last couple of years. And yeah, go check out um, the silicon, which is in Zoe's link in bio uh, on her profile as well. Um, and now I wanted to ask you about something that's um, kind of from in general practice that's kind of working slow or kind of, you know, slow and community oriented practice. And I was wondering, um, what do you mean by that? Kind of what is sw slow working in the context of, you know, work, labor, um, and in the context of your practice? Mm -hmm. So um, I would say that in the last few years, I realized I was getting more and more involved in production oriented projects whether it was exhibitions or residencies or writing, I mean, everything that could be in the range of activity of a curator. And whether it was a residency aimed at the production of an exhibition or an exhibition aimed at the production of a, uh, intriguing uh, uh, documentation or documentation aimed at becoming a relevant uh, digital content. So everything at some point seemed to be uh, aiming uh, to something else. And uh, so I realized I was actually, I actually wanted my work to be more focused on the process rather than on a predetermined uh, outcome in a way. Mm -hmm. And I think some good examples of this attitude can definitely be all silicon residency to start, where every time we invited an international group of artists to spend some time in the centralized area of Italy, producing artworks with the local networks of artisans, and therefore doing something that would have been innovative for them, but for the artisans as well. So really slowing down a little bit, getting to know the territory, uh, getting to experiment with local people and doing something that would have been an actual innovative experience for them in the first place. And looking to something more recent, I would talk about uh, uh, Orido 120, which is a residency and exhibition I co-curated with the curatorial duo uh, Something Must Break, and that was hosted by Swan Station. And uh, it took place in 2019, and the experience was basically uh, a group of artists who live in the mountains for a week installing artworks in a wood with no public uh, ever intended to visit. <laughs> so it was really uh, experience focused and the outcome was a sort of, a, uh, of an exhibition that was neither physical or digital and it was just a completely different uh, material. So I would say these are two pretty self-explanatory examples of what I mean by working slow. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that's, it's, you know, it's very important to um, kind of what you were saying made me, you know, think about the kind of different temporalities that you um, you can experience while working as a curator or working in in the culture um, cultural field in general, with work, you know, oftentimes being 
uh, precarious and very fast paced uh, and yeah a lot of kind of yeah. out outcome oriented kind of like you said um, so yeah kind of following on that um, yeah I want to ask you what was the last exhibition or project um, performance you know that you've mm -hmm. seen that made an an impression on you or kind of you know left a, a kind of something to made you think about something you know important I think I would talk about the very last one I saw, uh, which was a sort of show by artist Michele Gabriele, which is funny because it's actually in one of the pictures you chose for the carousel you made to uh, promote uh, this Instagram live. Um, it's a sort of show called uh, The Vernal Age of Mary Mirrors. It's curated by Duo Treti Galaxy and it just ended at the Nota Museum in Florence. And uh, you can definitely see some documentation in the Instagram uh, channels of the artist and the curators. And it was really interesting because it's uh, basically a show uh, about the investigation of, uh, on perception and in a way in the anthropocentric way of seeing. So it was a large group of sculptures and video, which was uh, a totally new thing for the artist to work on and basically a huge speculation of abstraction and figuration dynamics. So very dense show. I would totally recommend to see in pictures at least. Yeah, yeah, totally. I will we'll link them up uh, or tag them when we repost this live. So, so you can uh, check out yourself later. And I think we're kind of nearing towards, towards the end. And I have one final question, um, mm -hmm. which is, um, what are you currently working on or kind of uh, working towards, you know, either working on any new projects? Can you share that? Sure. Uh, so currently I'm working on a duo show by artists uh, Anni Pulaka and Ali Anter, uh, which is basically the sequel of their show Penetralia, which was exhibited at Peach in Rotterdam back in 2018. And the sequel of this exhibition we are working on basically aims to keep exploring the fantasies and the imagery that we create uh, to come to terms uh, with the reality of uh, interspecies coexistence. And it's very focused on uh, trying to get in touch, but also questioning the existence of the other. And that's a very <laughs> dense show as well. It's also interesting because it, uh, it's a project uh, we started working on uh, slightly before the beginning of the pandemic and having the artists uh, being based in Helsinki and New York uh, and me being based in Milan. Uh, it was really interesting to see how everything was developing uh, with this great distance between us. So many of the pieces uh, in the show will be um, actually pretty much site specific uh, because everything was conceived uh, uh, with thousands of kilometers uh, between uh, every mind on the project. And uh, yeah, it would be definitely an interesting uh, development uh, of what the artist did uh, in 2018. All right, thank you. Looking forward to, to seeing that develop. Um, Me too. <laughs> sounds really, yeah, sounds really fascinating and like a really, really important uh, topic to, you know, to talk about. Um, yeah, I think that's, um, that was, you know, the last question and yeah, thank you Zoris for joining us tonight so much. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed, you know, learning more about your work and your practice and I hope everyone else did as well. I'm sure everyone else did as well. Um, yeah, it was very, uh, it was great having you here with us tonight. And yeah, we're going to host these um, CFC member quizzes um, every Monday uh, at 6 p.m. CST. Um, and we'll be announcing the upcoming one very shortly in a couple of days. Uh, so yeah, just keep, a, uh, keep an eye out for the profile and check out Zoe's uh, Instagram and follow her. Uh, she's tagged in the uh, pinned comment. So, yeah, thank you very much once again, Zara. Yeah, really a pleasure. Can't wait to see who the other guests will be. So, yeah, I will be staying in touch for sure. <laughs> great. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone else who joined. And, yeah, have a great evening, day, wherever you are. And, yeah, we'll see you next week.